You know, one of the most annoying things that can happen in Fortnite is to get eliminated in the mid game. If you get eliminated early, I mean, that's fine because you haven't invested much time into the round. Eliminated in the end game, well, at least you made it and you just got some placement points. But getting eliminated in the mid game, I mean, it's the worst feeling in the world. Bunch of crunch me, where you at? Listen, today we're gonna be going over everything that you need to know about surviving in the mid game with this ultimate guide. You guys ready for this? I know I am. Let's get this going. Okay, so I know a lot of us have a different idea of what we consider mid game, but for the sake of this video, we're gonna deem the mid game to start when you rotate out of your drop location. All right, so if you've made it safely to mid game, now what? Okay, so the first thing that you need to do, guys, is get a general idea of what your goal is in the middle of your games. And so, you know, there are a wide variety of goals, you know, players have, and your goal could be completely different from your friends. And so some players might be looking to just pick up some elimination points. Others might be looking to upgrade their loot. But most importantly, guys, like everybody's looking to stay alive and make it to the end game. I hope you are. So overall, like one of the most important parts of the mid game is developing your own mid game playstyle. You know, as we mentioned before, this is just something that can be fundamentally different for everybody. And, you know, a lot of your mid game playstyle should really depend on your strengths as a player. And so one of the best ways to begin to find your mid game playstyle is really just by simply having a question and answer session with yourself. That's not weird, right? <laughs> All right. So here are some questions to consider. Do you struggle to stay alive throughout the mid game? Are you good at disengaging fights that aren't, that aren't optimal? Are you a good fighter? Do you struggle to get elimination points later on in the game? You know, these are all the questions that you gotta really be considering when crafting a mid-game playstyle. And so, for example, like if you know that you're really good at fighting, then you might choose to isolate and take more fights mid-game than other players. On the other hand, like if you're a really good in-game player, you might elect to take no fights at all in, in an effort to just really get to the part of the match that you thrive in. So find your strengths, guys, and play around them. You can do it. All right. So if you can't figure out whether you thrived in the early game, the mid game, or the late game, then you need to head on over to ProGuys.com, guys, like right now. Like we've got coaches who are waiting 24 seven to help you guys improve fast, and they're gonna play right alongside of you. They're gonna be guiding you and help you with every you know mistake that you've been making so you can become the best Fortnite player that you can be. All right, you don't have time for a coaching session. All right, that's fine. Check out a masterclass presented by the best of the best, Clicks and Mongrel. These are classes, they're just the ultimate best, man, in Fortnite and tricks. The next aspect of mid game that you must master is zone density. Now you've probably heard this term before because no matter what season it is, understanding and properly evaluating zone densities is an extremely important part of becoming a good player. And so for those of you that are just, you know, new to this channel or, you know, you just need a quick refresher, zone density is the number of players per unit of the map. And so in other words, like how many players are in a given area? Identifying and rotating into the dead side of every mid game zone should be a top priority, guys. Like the dead side of the zone is the portion of the zone where there is the least amount of players within the most space. Generally speaking, like the dead side of the zone will play to the corner of the map that the first zone plays to. All right, for example, if the first zone plays to the bottom left of the map, the quadrant of the zone that will consistently be dead side will be the quadrant towards Slurpee Swamp. If you're a player who wants to take fights mid game, by getting yourself to the dead side, you will allow yourself to get isolated fights. For players that excel at end game and you want to avoid fights, the dead side is also the spot that you want to be because, you know, that's the portion of the zone that will contain the least amount of players. And so regardless of the strategy, you should always be taking zone density into consideration. Watch your credit star me. Okay, it's time for the question of the day. All right, today we want to know what part of the game you think you're best at. Like, are you incredible at dropping into the map and securing eliminations in the early game? Game, or are you the best at just hunting down other solos or trios in the mid game and just taking them out? Or are you, are you just an end game master tunneling their way to victory? Let us know in the comments down below because you already know we check out every single one of them. All right, let's get back into this video. Here we go. Another part of the mid game is your rotational ability. And this overall is the most important part of mid game and your understanding or lack of understanding of like how rotations work will directly correlate to your overall skill as a player. As we just discussed, zone densities play is a major part in rotations, but are not the only factor. So in chapter two, season six, there's a variety of ways to rotate and it's not all about location. You know, in this season, man, like we have a lot of rotational items at our disposal, including cars and boats, zip lines, consumable items, and even chickens now. Okay, so if you understand zone densities already, all right, the next thing, guys, that you need to do is understand how to get from your drop location to your second circle rotation 
both efficiently and really depending on your play style unharmed so once again you need to have a little bit of a question and an answer session with yourself i'm telling you man these work so think about your drop location and just ask yourself what rotational items do i have at my disposal if you are landing at a location like steamy stacks you have the smokestacks to use for your first rotation. This means that you can stay at your original drop location later, just knowing that you should have a free rotation into the next zone. And so if you are landing at the edge of the map, you most likely have a boat somewhere that you can just take to travel around the edge of the map or just by using your inland streams to make it to your first rotation. All right, finally, maybe you land somewhere like Pleasant Park where there are just no boats and you are just stuck using consumables like peppers or cars found throughout the POI in order to make your first rotation. So regardless of where you land, guys, you need to be considering your surroundings in order to make a proper first rotation as well as following rotations. So the final aspect of the mid game, guys, that we're gonna be discussing is farming. Now, I know this may seem like a simple concept to most of you, but trust me on this, all right? There is a lot more to it this season. Okay, so for all of you guys that play competitive Fortnite, it's a pretty second nature thing at this point, right? To farm up to max materials during the mid game. In chapter two, season six, there's a whole new aspect of play to consider. In chapter two, season six, there have been a lot of major changes to the loot pool, including adding makeshift weapons that can be upgraded. And so by default, makeshift weapons are pretty average to below average weapon choices, but that can drastically change after upgrading them. Not to mention, you're still able to upgrade a majority of the other weapons in the game as well. So upgrading weapons to higher rarities increases your chances of winning the game significantly because your weapons will be just better than your opponents when a fight breaks out. And so in order to upgrade weapons, you need to collect bones and mechanical parts found by harvesting animals throughout the map, as well as farming things like cars or RVs. And so as a result of this, guys, you need to put yourself in positions mid game where you can regularly farm, you know, for these bones and parts to ensure that you can constantly upgrade your weapons in every game. Mastering this ability, mastering this will surely put you at an advantage in chapter two, season six. All right, guys, bunch of crunch time. I hope you guys still here. It's time for a quick recap. Here we go. First things first, man. Figure out what your mid game play style is going to be by considering your personal strengths and weaknesses to ensure the best outcome. And so if you're a late game master out there, then avoid fights. But if the mid game is where you thrive, yo, it's time to go on to the hunt. Second, take time to understand zone densities in order to properly evaluate where you should rotate. And so if you wanna fight players by isolating them and not getting third party, go to the dead side of the zone, guys. And the same can really be said if you wanna to try to avoid fights completely. All right, third, understand what rotational items that you have available to you and really just use those to your advantage when rotating. And this is gonna you know, vary depending on where you are, but almost every location on the map will have something that allows you to rotate a little faster. And finally, bunch of crimson army acknowledge the importance of farming and regularly just put yourself in position to acquire mechanical parts and bones. And so if you don't have mats, you won't be able to really engage in in-game situations. And so if you don't have mechanical parts and bones, you won't be able to upgrade your weapons. So farming all three is essential. But your current army, okay, look, if you guys take the time to master all the tips that we went over today, I promise you're gonna die less in mid game and making it through to the end game more often. And if you guys are looking to get better at the other areas of the game, hey, you can always check out the rest of our tips and tricks because man, I'm telling you, it's really gonna take you to the next level. Hey, I want you to be successful. I want you to be great, not only in this game, but also also in life. Sub to the channel, like the video, and I'll see you soon.